words and your the contribution that you have, you have uh, given for the protecting and promoting the human rights of Tamils in Sri Lanka. And let's move on to the next um, event. I kindly request Dr. Peter Sharp, Professor Emeritus, Uppsala University, who was closely connected to the exchange program between Uppsala University and University of Jaffna. He, he is the author of the books. He has written some books on this uh, Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. So I, I, I proudly invite uh, to deliver a speech on this Buddhist structures. Yeah, thank you. Dear friends, first I want to thank uh, the British Tamil Forum for having arranged this meeting, which is very important for the understanding of uh, radicalization of politics. I shall come into that a little later. Also, uh, I want to thank for having invited me also. I shall speak and give a descriptive account of the changes and radicalization of the concept of Dhammadipa. The concept of Dhammadipa is the heart, the kernel of uh, the ideology of expansion and colonization. So I shall come into that especially. Next, please. Uh, what I'm going to speak about is, uh, above all, in the article about the semantic transformation of the concept of Dhammadipa. It was published in, in uh, Britain. Uh, and then uh, a team of scholars in Uppsala has published uh, four volumes on Buddhism among Tamils, and uh, number three, part three, is especially important because part three is about uh, this, uh, what is called here, Buddhist structures. Uh, but uh, we were a little earlier, from 2010, 11, and 12, and have uh, in, uh, published a special section in this book, uh, Victorian Documentation. But it is a little different from the pictorial documentation you are seeing here, because uh, we give uh, specific names and labels to the structures, like Malasana, Vihara, Budugi, Divale, Dharmashalaya, and so on, because this is important to measure the degree of settlement. If you are only a Malasana, it's very easy to get rid of that, but uh, once you have established uh, Budugi, uh, completely Ava, then there is no chance of uh, uh, eliminating that. Uh, then uh, there are also a lot of uh, museums which have been constructed in which the government gives its own history of what has happened. And then also memorials, war memorials mixed up with Buddhist symbols. Uh, you all know that a soldier uh, in Singala is called Rana Niraya, and it means uh, war hero. And uh, he is surrounded then by Buddhist symbols. <coughs> so Buddhist structures, uh, I mean in the future, uh, working on this book, which I hope will be done, should uh, take care of uh, classification of the buildings which are mentioned. Then we go to uh, the next 
Next picture, please. Political Buddhism is a part of political religion. But what is political religion? I have defined it here as uh, uh, including a deferment of its ultimate religious aim for the benefit of an immediate political aim in a situation of emergency. <coughs> so if we apply this to singular political Buddhism, next page please, uh, we can say that uh, this kind of political Buddhism is a deferment of its ultimate religious aim to reach Nibbana for the benefit of a political aim, which today is the preservation of the unitary state. In the pre-colonial period, it was the concept of the state under one umbrella, Ekachatma, which is mentioned several times, and which promised continuity of Buddhism. And also, it included that the king had to be a Buddhist. Therefore, poor Elara, who was a just king, he didn't have a chance. He was just, but he was not a Buddhist. And therefore, he had to move. Political Buddhism, next. Uh, political Buddhism today can be included in a wider concept within comparative studies. This concept is political religion, as I have defined, which is used here as a technical term used by commentators. Political religion is a blanket name for political religions and is a global entity. The political Buddhism of uh, Lanka is part of it. Next. Other examples of political religions based on Christianity are Italian fascism, German Nazism, the British Union of Fascists, and the Roman Iron Guard, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, ISIS, are examples of political religions based on Islam. The Rastriya Swayam Sevak Sangh in India is based on Hinduism. So political religion is nothing specific for Lanka. You find it everywhere where there is an emergency. This is very important. The distinction, next, the distinction between the teaching of the Buddha and political Buddhism is, in my case, a speaker here, phenomenological and historical, but it can also be made in a religious and in a political way in defense of the Buddha. Let us, for example, look at the next at the famous poet in Chennai, whom you all know, <coughs> Shortly after the anti tamil pogrom in July 1983, he published a collection of poetry showing the weeping Buddha on the cover. The Leaping Buddha topic is based on his widespread book in Tamil, entitled Kautamarin Kanir. <coughs> Let us uh, go further. Next. There is a famous comment from 1984 by Virupire Prabhakar about President Junius Chayaradhan <coughs> Chia, who was the responsible of the Bosun against <coughs> the Tiger movement. Enupile Prabhakar said, if Chayavaduna was a true Buddhist, I would not be carrying a gun. So these are examples of Tamils making a clear distinction between the teaching of the Buddha and other forms, militant forms, warlike forms of Buddhism. Uh, next, uh, this is uh, an extract of Sedu Rahman's poem about the weeping Buddha. I shed tears, he let uh, the Buddha speak. I shed tears, I, Gautama, shed tears. All my teachings gone with the wind. All my big shoes, thoughts, sepulchred. All singleings maddened with lust for ill earned wealth. I'm sundered, all my teachings teach me way. 
when he said he are all Zingalese, that is of course uh, his uh, personal conviction, but it is not true. But let us say the political structure instead. Next. The historical emergencies for the formation of political singular Buddhism were the invasions of Tamil warriors from Tamil Aram in the pre-colonial period. I know that uh, many Tamils deny this, uh, but uh, I cannot help it is uh, one of the most decisive factors of the mobilization of Sinhala uh, radicalization. And second, uh, we have the invasions of the Portuguese, Dutch, and British in the colonial period. They threatened, and this is true, the existence of a Buddhist culture in the island. Next, a political religion is formed when there is a real or imagined threat. This is important uh, that we face also imagined threats. Media often work with just imagined threats against the existence of a group of the population or the majority of the population. Next. The ideological religious defense was laid down in the Mahavangsa where we find a reinterpretation of the canonical concept of Dhamma Dhamma. The Buddha already had this concept of Dhamma Next. In the Buddhist Pali Canon, Deepa is used for light, uh, also for islands, but in the sense of sarana, of refuge. It has absolutely nothing to do with the island Lanka. That is very important to know. Uh, Deepa, if it is uh, referring to an island, uh, has nothing to do. The Buddha didn't know anything about Lanka, even if this is then said that he had mm -hmm. later in the Mahans, but this is an unhistorical account. In the canonical Mahaparinibbana Sutta, uh, that is the next, yeah, that is the Dita Nikaya. The subject is uh, in case one, and case one is uh, for light, huh? Deepa means light. A universal subject whosoever has the Dhamma is guiding <coughs> There is uh, no specific subject for it, uh, everybody. In case two, where uh, the Deepa is uh, the island, the subject is still whosoever, but Deepa, Deepa has meaning, the meaning of island as metaphor for sauna. So we could just uh, uh, replace uh, island with sauna or refuge. The island is not a physical island, but is a mental refuge. Then we go a step further and leave uh, the canonical Buddhist scriptures which do not have any idea about Sri Lanka. Let me say this clearly. Huh? But when we come to the Mahansa 148, written after the experience of several invasions from Tamil Aram in the 5th century AD, the subject changes character from a universalized subject to a parochialized religion, the island Lanka. So the Lanka become Lanka, the island, becomes the subject. The meaning of Dhamma Deepa is now having uh, the Dhamma as light, but the subject is the island Lanka, according to Mahalanka 177, that the Buddha himself has sealed Lanka as the place which has the Dhamma as light. Universalism which we find in the Buddha, Buddhist scriptures has been replaced by parochialism. In the Mahāvāṁsa we also find the concept of Ekachatra, one umbrella. 
The island Lanka has to be ruled under one umbrella, under a king who is a Buddhist. Even if Elava was a just king, he was not a Buddhist. Therefore, he had to be eliminated. Next. The third uh, reinterpretation of the canonical version of Dhammadipa stems from, colonial, from the colonial experience of the Anagarika Dharma. Ala. Next. The Anagarika never considered Deepa to mean light or any island as metaphor for refuge. Next. For the Anagarika, Deepa is the physical island, Lanka, in the footsteps of the Mahavamsa. Dhammadipa means allegedly island Lanka of the Dhamma. So he has completely changed the meaning of um, uh, Dhammadipa as we know it from the canon. For the Anagarika, the subject for learning the Dhamma is not a universal mind, but the subject is ethnically limited to the Singhamas. Therefore, next, therefore, he can create the formula of contemporary political Buddhism as an equation, which many of you may have learned as children, Dhamma Deepa equal to Singhala Deepa. This means that the island Lanka is the island of the Dhamma for the Singhala's own. <coughs> Modern political, Buddhist, modern political Buddhists follow the Anagarika's formula. They have also taken up the Ekachatta concept of the Mahavantra and modernized it in 1972 to be a unitary state. Next, the unitary state from 1972 guarantees centralized power in the majoritarian rule and homogeneity of culture, which is Buddhist culture transmitted in Pali and Sinhala. Next, the aim of political Sinhala Buddhists is to gain control over non-Buddhist areas, which is a necessary condition for reaching the ultimate aim, which is Nibbana. Political Buddhism sanctions colonization of non-Buddhist areas as a way to reach its ultimate aim. Political Buddhism instrumentalizes politics to reach an ultimate religious aim. Next, these religious concepts of Ekachatra and unitary state has a double function. They inspire to colonize non-Buddhist areas to fulfill the promise, the alleged promise, huh, of the Buddha, and it rationalizes colonization of non-Buddhist areas. Religion and economy compete for priority. Together, they are strong. Next, the Gosul instrumentalize political Buddhism to justify colonization. Next. These religious concepts of Ekachatra and unitary state has a double function. They inspire to colonize non-Buddhist areas to fulfill the promise, alleged promise of the Buddha, and it rationalizes colonization of non-Buddhist areas. Religion and economy compete for priority, but together they are strong. Internal colonization is also rationalized by non-religious means, by the Gosul. The Gosul has to turn towards the world and to come up with the goodies in the United Nations and other international uh, meetings, it wouldn't work. So it has also rationalized non-religious means. The formula which you have heard many times is we are all Sri Lankans. Singhalas and Tamils can settle anywhere. <coughs> the problem with this formula is the many pogroms in Singhala areas. You all know of them. 
of uh, at least uh, five problems uh, since uh, independence in 1948. 1983 was uh, reversed. Uh, this was one problem. There are many uh, problems in singular areas which contradict that singular dynamics can, can settle into them. The second uh, point is <coughs> Sri Lankan is a demon. That is a, 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 a demonym means a name for the whole population of the island. Huh? Uh, so it is used to avoid to distinguish between ethnic communities in the country. Huh? But it is also used sometimes just to be a cover for the ethnonym Singala. So uh, by just uh, talking about Lankans, uh, you feel all the time that by Lankans they mean an ethnonym, namely Singala's domination. So this is what I wanted to say about um, um, the theme of political uh, Buddhism uh, in Sri Lanka. We find uh, political religions in many countries, but here we have a specific case based on cultural phenomena. But it is comparable to many other cases where we have political religions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, on how this political Buddhism emerged from uh, Greece.